What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, I receiving my super live, the super live here on Nick Fans Brazil channel. Emily Austin, welcome. Welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm happy you too. <laughs> uh, first of all, Emily, uh, uh, you do you can introduce yourself uh, to Brazilians? First of all, I want to say I love all the Brazilians I've ever met. I want to shout out uh, Brazilians. <laughs> you have my fan, like I'm a fan. Um, I love your culture, so I'll introduce myself to you guys. My name is Emily Austin. I'm a sports broadcaster from New York. Um, I do plan to visit Brazil one day. So I love that you guys share your love for a New York team like the Knicks. And yes. um, I appreciate it. Oh, great. Come to Brazil. Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. Come to Sao Paulo. It's on my list. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, uh, I want to nah, talk with you. Uh, I saw that you are uh, having a very meteoric career, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And people yeah. are amazed uh, when uh, you say your age uh, and you are still very young. Yeah, it's definitely been interesting. Um, when I tell people my age, I don't really tell people. They find out either from Googling me or maybe I, I did a birthday post on instagram when it turned 21 and i got a lot of messages like no way i don't believe you everyone was like, oh, i don't talk about my age but everyone you're right it takes back a lot Me of you yeah too. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes back. everyone's very shocked and i take it as a compliment because you know they're always impressed and most of the time they say the same thing they say how did you accomplish so much and my answer is i'm just like that <laughs> <laughs> you are uh making a great job great job great Thank job uh, welcome uh i want to know emily i want to know uh how your passion uh for basketball is starting yeah it, you know i have a very cute story um i used to play tennis my whole life my whole life i played very competitive Whoa. and basically what happened was i trained for my tennis camp in florida so florida had at the time that heat culture where they were a championship team two years in a row And that was the time that I was focused there. So while I'm training in my tennis camp, I come home from tennis camp and I see Miami heat flags all over the city. And I didn't really know too much about the heat, but I saw on everyone's t-shirt, that same trio. And then I started to watch it slowly because how not? It's like a culture. The whole city is following this team. So the following season, I happened to watch the heat and they, again, were a championship team. <laughs> So I was very young at the time. I was 12, maybe 13, but I don't live in Miami. So when I came to New York, I obviously followed the Knicks because it's local to me. I could go to the Knicks games. I could go with my family and I have a good time. So that's when my love for basketball started, but I didn't start following New York teams until I kind of settled back with tennis. And then I fell in love with the sport. So now I love every team, but being in New York, how could you not follow? I love the Knicks and the Nets. I get hate for that, but it's a New York <laughs> culture. Yes. I saw a, a post uh, in TikTok. You, you, you comment the Nets and the Knicks. <laughs> yes. Well, I forgot that TikTok. Um, we'll pull it up after. Oh, it was like a TikTok, like the Nets or Knicks. Yes. No, yeah, yeah, that was funny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. great. That was great. Uh, I saw uh, the inter your interviews, okay, and uh, I 
I wish, né? Uh, I, I won't talk with you about these interviews. What, uh, with Jalen Brunson, uh, Emmanuel Kikley, uh, Mitchell Robinson. Uh, what, uh, what can you say about uh, each of them? Uh, something curious, yeah. uh, something you can share with us? Right. So we'll start with Mitch because he was the first Knicks player I interviewed. Mitch was very interesting because a lot of the times what makes me happy about these interviews is you get to learn who a person is as a person. A lot of times you only mm -hmm. get to see them on the court. But my question is, who are they off the court? So a big part of my interviews yes. are asking them about, okay, what would you do if you weren't an NBA player? So what I learned about Mitchell Robinson was that he, first of all, is very family oriented, very family guy. He loves to race cars. He likes to fish, which is like, you know, a simple thing, but it's just funny to see like some of these guys, he's their favorite player. Did you know he loves fishing? Did you know he races cars? It's just like a fun <laughs> fact, you know? Uh -huh. So that was interesting to learn. Um, Emmanuel quickly was my second Knicks interview. He, I remember we spoke a lot about Kentucky. He, I think he was a rookie at the time. So it was very interesting. I wanted to see who's the Knicks new rookie. He loved yes. Kentucky, obviously. A lot of people love Kentucky. They breed NBA players at this point. So it was nice to hear like his perspective. Um, I remember he was very, Religious isn't the word. Maybe it's religious. Mm -hmm. You can talk on that. But, you know, very grateful, which is very nice. I love when people appreciate the journey. So he definitely is a very grateful person, which is very sweet. And then Jalen, it was an interesting interview because now he's a Nick, but I interviewed him as a Maverick. But I was very happy to see Jalen was yes. coming to the Knicks because I think he is going to contribute a lot to the season. I think he's a great shooter. I think he's going to help us offensively. So I would like Jalen, this is a message. I would like a part two as a Nick. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a great interviews. Uh, this, these three uh, interviews, uh, I, I think uh, so, so, so amazing. Uh, your job is so amazing. Uh, Thank you. I really, really uh, happy to uh, bring you in this channel. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, I am curious uh, uh, for you uh, so far, uh, what's, what's uh, the most uh, important interview uh, for you uh, do you can say uh, to us, in your opinion? Uh, you told me you were going to ask me this, and I still didn't think of an answer, so shame on me. But yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, it's such a difficult question because I imagine almost, it. <laughs> almost every interview, a player has given me a piece of information that stuck with me. Every single person has such a cool story. Just because we mentioned his name, Jalen, so it's like fresh in my mind. I remember throughout his interview, I asked him you know, a question about having a dad as an NBA player. How did that affect you growing up? And to me, you know, my job is to get as much information as I can. So when a player is yes. willing to open up, which all the players I interviewed have been fantastic, I appreciate that. And I remember, again, maybe because we just spoke about it, Jalen's interview, he really gave me a lot of information. He was really honest, you know, spoke about emotions, like the pressure of having a father in the league. And now I see his dad's even on the coaching staff. So it's interesting to see how that relationship continues to unfold. But I just love when like a player is willing to just talk on and on and on. So that has been, that was one of my favorite interviews, but um, it's hard to remember the earlier ones. But recently I went to NBA Summer League, I interviewed Chet Holmgren. Yes, great yeah. interviews, great yeah. interviews. The Rooks. <laughs> yeah. So I had a really good interview during NBA Summer League. I interviewed... Sharif O'Neal, where coincidentally he was wearing a Kobe Bryant shirt. I wasn't planning to ask him a question about it. But when I saw the shirt, I said, I have to ask you, did Kobe Bryant teach you anything that you can share with us? And he shared such a beautiful lesson. The lighting wasn't so good in the interview, but you could see I started to like tear up a little bit. It was such a beautiful story. 
So that's going to stick with me for a very long time. Oh, that's great. That's great. I, I, I really, really like it. These interviews, mm -hmm. uh, we, we talked uh, about uh, Jalen Brunson, né? but before uh, I want to talk with you about the rumors, né? The, the biggest rumors in this off season, okay? Yep. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, or uh, we, we, we joke with uh, Alan Hunt, Spider-Man 4, yeah, uh, my yeah. the new Miles Morales coming to the Knicks. <laughs> What's your opinion about uh, these rumors uh, with Donovan Mitchell? Yeah, so my theory on rumors is usually, as a person, as a human, I hate rumors, and a lot of the time it's nonsense. But a lot of the time it's not nonsense. Yes. And I think this situation is one of those times where it's not nonsense. I. If I bet on sports, which I don't right now, but I will soon, I would <laughs> bet. I would definitely bet that Donovan Mitchell is going to be a New York Nick. I think the actual execution is not as simple as people think. I remember I tweeted the other day. I tweeted Donovan Mitchell will be a Nick, and all of the comments were when, which is the famous question. I saw. When? You did so. Um, <laughs> I think it's definitely going to be like a numbers game at this point, but I think it will happen. Me too. Me too. Uh, like I said with Alan, uh, Spider-Man 4 in com coming soon. And uh, so. I mean, yeah. Marvel, Marvel, uh, Marvel will love this advertising. I do, I do love Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I, uh, we talked about Donovan Mitchell. Uh, but I, I want to uh, talk with you about these new Nick, uh, new, new players uh, on Knicks. Uh, Jalen Brunson, né? again, and Isaiah uh, Hartenstein. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your opinion uh, about the future uh, to the Knicks with these guys? Yeah, you know, generally I really value international players. I think the European League is a little bit more aggressive, which is good and bad. It's bad on the fouling side, but it's good in terms of, you know, aggression. And I think Isaiah is very slept on. I was looking at his stats today earlier because I was just like reading a bunch of articles before coming on this podcast. And, you know, I think it's nice that Mitchell Robinson will now have backup. I think defensively he's fantastic. And offensively people probably don't know in depth because he's slept on. He's very good offensively as well. So in terms of minutes, I think he needs to see more minutes for people to really appreciate the value of him. But I think once he gets that opportunity, people will see like, wow, this is really nice. And Mitchell Robinson now has someone to like fall back on. Um, yeah, about, and about uh, RJ Barrett, I want to talk with you. Man, I love RJ Barrett. Uh, I have Funko, man. I have Funko. Funko. You do? Oh. Let me see. <laughs> oh. Funko, great. RJ Barrett. I am a great fan. Nah. Yeah. But uh, not my opinion here. I want uh, your opinion. Um, what do you think about RJ Barrett? Do you think RJ Barrett can be a future All Star or not? Ooh. It's a tough question. Huh. Um, can you be a future all-star? You know what? There's a couple of factors. There's health, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, one injury is all it takes to lessen those odds. Secondly, it's how much work are you willing to put in during the off-season? I don't think work is a question. He seems like a hustler. So assuming he stays healthy and he has the opportunity to shine, that's the question. Will RJ Barrett have the opportunity to become an all-star? Because it's all situational. You can be talented, but if you're not given the opportunity, you might never see that. Mm -hmm. But does he have the potential? Like, of course, he does have the potential. Uh, man, I super believe, but the future uh we will show that nah, rj barrett can be or not nah. 
But uh, I, 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 I think nah, RJ Barrett needs to nah, uh, prove uh, more, more things for, for, for NBA. Uh, but I super, be super believe in this player. Super believe. Uh, and Julius Randle. Julius Randle, do you know? Uh, you know, in the last season, man, it's complicated. Uh, in season, uh, Knicks come back to the playoffs. Nah? Julius Randle, MIP. Uh, whoa, Julius Randle. Okay. Next season uh, is the mm. last season. Julius Randle uh, use yeah. the phone. Uh, do you uh, you know uh, about the stories and the last season? Uh, yeah, I've been to a lot of teams. I, I heard the feedback from the fans. Let's just say. <laughs> do you think uh, Julius Randle can be better in the the next season? Uh, playing together, uh, Jalen Brunson, for example. Yeah, I think, you know, I can't explain to you why he had an off season. I feel like it's just situational. But I obviously think help, it's a team sport. If you have help from Jalen Brunson, and I really do think Donovan Mitchell will be a Nick, Julius Randle's more of a big guy. I think that dynamic would be very good for him question is will he be a nick next season <laughs> uh, for me the problem in the the last season with uh julius randall uh with here here the problem nah. uh i think uh, julius randall it's a good player it's a good player yeah, but so uh, uh but mentally mentally uh, help mentally in the last season man uh, julius randall uh with the front offs uh to nick fans uh, yeah. uh phone with a journalist uh, do you know uh yeah. you understand uh, it's it's complicated now nah? uh, uh the problem for me now nah, in the the last season nah, and the effect now nah, uh julius randall with the team now nah? yeah i think you know sports as much as it is physically it's more mentally because you can be physically fit, but if it's your head's not in the game, you're not in the game. And obviously it's easy to say on the other side of things, like just get your head in the game, ignore the haters, ignore this, ignore that, you know, easier said than done. But if your head's not in the game, you cannot perform at your peak physically. You just can't. So I hope, you know, this off season, he had some time, he has the cutest son. I always see his son at the games. He is so precious. I hope he spent time with his family. I hope he trained. I hope he got more of like a mental health break. And then you start the season with a new brain, new mentality, new season, new team. You know, it's it's a new season. I feel like it's almost a fresh start if things go as planned. And that might affect him mentally as well. Because a lot of the times you are who your teammates are. And if you have a lot of help, it might help you here too. Yes. Uh, they begin in this channel. Uh... I talk it uh, with uh, uh, Randall's mom. Uh, yeah. Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> super, super, super uh, great person. But uh, with the time, uh, we can <laughs> a little, a little, a little. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's very, very cool. It's very cool. Uh, uh, Randall's mom. And uh, yeah. man, uh, Julius Randall. It's complicated, né? but uh, we will see in the in the next season. Né? Uh, yeah. The problem with the Knicks, uh, uh, Knicks fans uh, don't have a, a great team. Uh, so, so, so long time ago. It's complicated. Né? Uh, the fans, uh, the patience, the patience, uh, the Knicks with the players, uh, it's complicated. It, and Julius Randle, uh, uh, MIP, nah, in, in in one season. And the next season, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 well, you could be here one day, and then you could be here the next day. 
it's complicated it's complicated uh uh, I, I mentioned uh, to you in backstage, uh, this channel uh, uh, can uh, make a, a trip to New York. And uh, oh. I, <laughs> uh, more 20 Brazilians, 20 Brazilians. Uh, and I, ho I hope to meet you in New York. Yes. You should go to the next game. We'll do a meeting. Yes, game. yes. Uh, I... I really, really want to to New York uh, next year, next year, and uh, I I want I want me to you Alan, uh, Anthony Anthony Dan Danahue, uh, and so many people Ashley Nicole Moss, nah? uh, yeah. uh, greatest interviews like you like you in this channel, man, nah? uh, So I I hope me too in New York. Yeah, totally. We should definitely, the whole Knicks squad that you've interviewed, should all meet at a Knicks game. Yes, we sure. And uh, come to Brazil too. Come to Brazil, visit our, our, country. our country. Our country. We will we love to uh, see you in, in this channel. I will leave uh, in, the, in the description uh, of this video. Uh, the links uh, of the uh, social medias, né? Uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, TikTok, uh, for Brazilians uh, to follow you, né? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And I, I mentioned earlier, I really love Brazilian culture. So, you know, if you guys do make your way to New York, <laughs> New York would be a better place. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a, a, a really, uh, for me, Nah, it's a great uh, pleasure uh bring you in this channel i hope you you enjoy nah? and uh in the future uh we can uh, bring you again in this channel uh thank you so much uh for your time nah? uh and you're so so great person man uh really yeah. i happy i'm happy here uh to talk with you in this channel thank you so much i appreciate that Okay, take care, and uh, uh, I uh, I see you in the future, man. Yes, yes. Bye. Bye, bye. E aí, pessoal? Este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever. Se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos e também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não, para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! Are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan. Oh.